Joining me now to talk about the state of the Republican race, Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky. Senator, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Uh, Sarah Palin endorsed you when you ran for Senate in Kentucky. It gave you something of a boost. Um, when I asked her about which candidate she liked a few weeks ago, she praised Trump, she praised Cruz, she also praised you. You must be a little disappointed. Well, I think that, uh, yeah, sure, we'd love to have her endorsement, but I think really the question still isn't her endorsement. The question, is Donald Trump a conservative? And I've often said that I think he is a fake conservative because, you know, the Tea Party movement got started because we were upset with bailing out the big banks. Donald Trump favored that. The Tea Party also got started because we were upset with Obamacare and a single payer where the government's in charge of health care. Trump supported that. So I think really that he isn't a conservative, and the endorsement may help people to think he is, but I don't really think he is a conservative. It, you're certainly not the first person to make that charge. Why do you think it hasn't stuck? Because there obviously is something of a paper trail of his giving money to Democratic politicians, saying nice things about Secretary of State Clinton. Right. How come nothing sticks to him? There could be this small thing that if you add up all of the time that he's gotten on TV compared to all the rest of the candidates, he's gotten 25 times more than all the rest of the candidates combined. So it is a question, did the polling come and so the news covered him, or did the news coverage cause the polling, which the chicken, the egg kind of thing? The other question is, is the polling really accurate? We think that it's wildly inaccurate and that you may be surprised on February 1st. Governor Branstead in Iowa says that Ted Cruz uh, has the best ground game in Iowa. You say you're going to surprise us all the night of the Iowa caucuses by a stronger showing than anticipated. Um, what, is, what do you have in Iowa going that Governor Branstead doesn't see? We have 1,000 precinct chairs. There are 1,600 precincts in Iowa. We have 1,000 precinct chairs. That's not a small feat to get 1,000 people that are your leader in the precinct will help get turnout and actually will speak for your candidacy on that night. I was just there this weekend. If you go into our headquarters, you'll see 100 young men and women making phone calls. They made a half a million phone calls trying to find who our voters are and to try to turn them out. This is an operation that at least rivals Cruz's operation, probably exceeds Trump operation, and really exceeds probably everybody else in the field. So there are two or three people that have an operation to turn out voters in Iowa, and we're one of them, and uh, we think it's unheralded. Do you think that Trump is stealing the traditional Rand Paul and Ron Paul voters, that is, people who are anti-establishment, mistrustful of government, uh, angry. I mean, is Trump, is Trump gobbled them all up? Maybe some of them. But one of the interesting thing is the Des Moines Register did a poll recently. And in that poll, they said, how many of you are going to vote for Rand Paul? And it was about 5%. How many of you voted for Ron Paul? Wasn't much different. However, he got over 20% in the election. So we think that the pollsters aren't finding, my dad's voters aren't finding our voters. Many of our voters are young. They have cell phones. They don't show up in surveys. And many of our people just, I think, are outside the normal traditional Republican voter. They're people who have voted and will turn out, but aren't on the traditional lists of people that pollsters are calling. All right, I have to ask you about this. Uh, you have said you will support the Republican nominee, whoever it is, even if it's Donald Trump. Today, you wrote a Facebook post in which you likened Donald Trump to Gollum, the bad guy uh, from Lord of the Rings. There's Gollum, there's a picture of the handsome fella. Okay, how on earth, or I guess I should probably say how on Middle Earth, is Donald Trump like Gollum? Well, you know, Gollum was uh, after his precious, his little ring, the ring of power. And to him, power was really important to be an obsession. And I think Donald Trump in some ways represents that in the sense that he's so smart, he's so rich. If you just give him power, he's going to fix everything. But, you know, I come from a tradition, the limited government tradition. Really, we hearken back even to the plains of Runnymede, to the barons challenging the king. We believe in limitation of power, and we believe that power corrupts and that absolute power corrupts absolutely. So we don't want a strong leader. In fact, I tell people all the time, I want to give power back to the states and the people. I want the presidency to have power taken away from it because I think the president's gotten too powerful. I don't hear that from Donald Trump. For what I hear from Donald Trump is, He's so smart, he's so rich, give him power and he'll fix everything. But that concerns some of us who are students of history who believe too much power is the problem. You'll concede that, that he's better looking than Gollum. <laughs> that, you'll, you'll think no, it was not a physical comparison. <laughs> not a physical comparison. <laughs> Senator Rand Paul, thank you so much. As I say to every candidate, good luck in Iowa. I hope, it's a, I hope it's a good night for you. Appreciate it.